All right, everybody. Um, welcome. We are going to um, talk through about, I'm thinking four, maybe five questions on friction. Um, and so I don't want to say what number it is, but um, right now this is number seven in uh, Mastering Physics. But so we got two workers, they got a box. Uh, one pushes with 420, the other one pushes with 300. All right. So if I think about my box, right? These guys are pulling, or gals, forgive me, are pulling with 420 and 300. It says they're going the same direction. Using a rope connected to the crate, both forces are horizontal and the crate slide with a constant speed. There's our keyword. Okay, if they're going constant speed, that means I have to have friction going the other way. Because if I didn't have friction, it'd speed up. Well, if I have 420 and 300 going one way, that means 720 is going the other way. Okay, so there's my first idea. Okay, so now let's go to the question. What is the crate's coefficient of friction? All right, so friction is mu times normal. So if the friction force, so, uh, so friction force, this first one is the force. This N stands for normal force. So let's do that first. Let's get that out here. So if it's 380 kilograms, that means my weight force is 3,800. Since I'm using mastery in physics, I need to use 9.8. Um, so I don't have a calculator on me, so I'm just going to leave it as 3,800, um, but use 9.8. So my normal force is 3,800, got a coefficient of friction, and my friction force is 720. So now I can come along and I can solve for what my coefficient is. Um, and there we go. So 7,200 um, divided by 3,800. Cool. Um, should we get a number? Let's get a number. Um, 720 divided by 3,800. So mine would be 0 0.189 or 0 0.19. Um, but if you use 9.8, so you do 720 divided by mass is 380 and divided by the 9.8. And so you get 0.19. See, that's close, but it's a little different. So if mastering physics, if it says, oh, you're wrong, um, that, that's what's going on. So, all right, let me clear this out of here. All right, let's get to, I wanted to do number six next. So let's go to number six. Um, hopefully you guys are doing good. Thanks for showing up. Um, hopefully this helps. Um, I'm gonna try to do this more. If this is helpful, let's, let me know. We'll, we'll keep doing it. So this is one of those problems, right? Don't know where my pen went. There you are. Okay, well, I don't know where my pen went. Here we go. So a 1600 kilogram car traveling at 26 meters per second skid still halts on wet concrete with a coefficient of friction. All right, so let's see, there we go, I got my pen back. So let's just draw a quick picture. So let's just say my block's moving, right? I got a normal force, I got a weight force, okay? And the thing that's stopping me is friction, okay? So if I were to do an equation, from that picture, I could say F net equals MA. And that F net is my force of friction. Okay, and mass, ooh, they gave it to me, right? Well, how long are the skid marks? Jeez, I don't know. Okay, let's, let's think through this. They asked me how long, so they're asking me for how far the distance or displacement, okay? That means I'm going to have to do this. So V initial, V final, acceleration, displacement of time. So I want to know how far it goes. Man, let's see. Let's see what I know here. Um, the initial speed is 26. If it's stopping on concrete, the final zero. Time, I'm not going to get time. What we got to do, I need acceleration. Okay, so I'm not going to do time. Um. So how am I gonna get acceleration? Well, I'm gonna go back over here to the left side. I gotta think, how am I gonna get acceleration? Well, I got the mass. There's my acceleration I wanna solve for. I just need to find the friction, okay? So the friction force, let's do that up here, okay? So the coefficient of friction they tell me is 0.5. Ooh, I could do that. And then the mass of the car is 1600. So the normal force would be times 10. Okay, because remember the weight force is mg, um, so that's 1600 times 10. Okay, so that's 16,000 newtons. 
Well, that's my weight force. But if you look at my picture, my normal force and my weight force are the same as each other. So if it's 16,000 is my weight, that means my normal force also has to be 16,000. So I'm gonna stick that there. So 0 0.5 times 16,000, put in calculator, you get 8,000, okay? Now I can solve for A, um, and I believe it is five, okay? Coolio. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's my acceleration. Mm, let's just track this over, oh yeah. So, um, since I have a positive velocity, it's going to have to be a negative acceleration, right? They got to undo each other. No time. So let's write out my equation. So V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X. So V final, zero. V initial, 26 squared plus 2 times negative 5 times delta X. So 26 squared is going to be 6, 625 plus 50, so 676. I'm just gonna write it down. You guys will let me know if I'm wrong, right? Um, I think that's right. Um, but yeah, delta X is negative 676 over negative 10. And so I get 67.6 meters. Now remember, if the, if the if mastering physics is like, oh, you're wrong, ready? See how I use 10 up here? Um, use a 9.8 if it says it's wrong, okay? And then that'll get you the more accurate answer, but it is going to be pretty darn close to that 67. So I wouldn't, I bet you it's going to work, okay? So I'm good. I, I bet you it's going to work. Um, so that's my strategy. So I do. Um, number six, we're going to number five. Five, five gave people a lot of problems. So let's just take a second on five, okay? Okay. Um, these these questions where you rank, they're tough. I like them, but let's let's kind of go through this, right? Below are six crates at rest. The crates have different masses and different coefficients of friction, so they're all of different roughnesses. Um, the same external force is applied to each crate, but none of the crates move. Okay, you ready? None of them move. Okay, so let's let's create a make believe number here. Let's say you push it with three newtons, but none of them move. None of them move, ready? If you push it with three newtons and it doesn't move, what's the friction? Three, because if it doesn't move, they have to be equal to each other, okay? So if this guy gets pushed with three, that's also gonna be three. If this guy's, so guess what? They are all exactly the same. So drag all of these and stick them here, okay? Where this would be tough and where you'd have to calculate. I think I want to talk about that because I know some of you, I saw your work, I saw you calculating it. So let's talk through that. If you calculated it, they would have to say, hey, it's moving. Like, let's say they're all moving. Well, if they're all moving, then you would just use the kinetic. And so that would be up here. Let's, let's just highlight it. That'd be the second one of these, right? So you'd use the second one of all of those. Um, but if, the, if they didn't say it was moving, that's where it's going to get tricky. So I think if we don't find one in here, um, I'm going to, we're just going to kind of make up a problem um, to talk about it. So let's see, six, seven, eight. Come on. I'm going to find a better way to get here. 11. Ooh, I like those. Um, That's a good question. I, I mean, I wanted to get to number 14, but this one just drew me in. So hold on now, people. Here we go. So we got, you walk it up an icy slope. Ooh, snow's coming. Suddenly your feet slip. No bueno. Will you slide at constant speed or will you accelerate? I'm not even going to read the answers because they're just going to mess with me. So I'm going I'm to think of my own first. So when I'm walking up, right, I've got something pulling me down the ramp. Well, what's keeping me up the ramp is friction. But at the beginning, when I'm walking, my feet aren't sliding. So that's static, right? So I got static friction. I got static friction holding me. And what's big, a big idea, is that the force of friction that's static, right, the maximum for that is going to be bigger than force of friction kinetic. 
So what does that tell me? That tells me once I start sliding, my kinetic friction is going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. And so it's not going to be able to stop me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to accelerate. So I'm not going to slide at constant speed. I will accelerate. I'm not going to slide at constant speed. I'm going to accelerate because the kinetic friction is greater than the maximum. Nope. Because the kinetic friction is less. And that's the big idea that we're trying to drive home here. Um, I know in class we've talked about it. It's like this idea of like a couch, right? That if you have this couch sitting here, that so think about that experience, pushing the couch, doesn't move, doesn't move, doesn't move. And then once it starts moving, it's easy to keep going. And that's the idea here that the kinetic friction is going to be smaller. Okay, hopefully that helped on that one. Um, this one, I'm going to leave. Think about which way the friction forces are going to be on them. Okay, I'm going to leave that one for you, okay? But if you're all having a hard time, you let me know. Okay, so we're going to do number 14. I have a lot of people asking about this one. This is the last problem on here. Um, this is good because it hits a whole bunch of math stuff. Truck is traveling at um, 20 meters per second on a slippery road. Ooh, snow's coming. Driver slams on the brakes and the truck starts to skid. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2. How far will the truck slide before stopping? Notice what they're missing here. No mass. Okay. So I'm going to draw a picture and we're going to kind of figure out how to do this. So there's kind of two strategies. One is I'm going to show you how to do it using the variables. But then the second way you could do it is you can just give it a mass. Okay. So the second way we'll do is you can just be like, hey, I know what the mass is. And the mass, if you make up a mass, it's always one kilogram. Um, so that's, that's a strategy that we're going to do, but I'm going to show you the way with variables first. Okay. So I'm moving here and I've got myself a normal force and I've got myself a weight force. And then backwards, I have my friction. Tracking so far is okay. Cool. So the first idea here is the force of friction is mu times normal. Okay. So the force of friction is mu. Well, let's look here. My normal force equals my weight force. So my normal force will equal mg. Okay, there's idea one. I'm gonna change colors for idea two. Idea two, you ready? That this thing is gonna be sliding and accelerating. So I can say F net equals MA. Well, what's my F net? It's the friction, okay? So I know how big my friction is. I'm just gonna put force of friction here, okay? I'm going back to blue, hold on now. Got a lot of colors jumping around here. Equals MA, okay? Well, let's look at the equation that I have for force of friction. Well, the equation I have for force of friction is mug, okay? UMG, or you can just write it as mug, okay? Whatever it takes to memorize stuff, equals MA. So this is M times U times G. I can change the order. So sorry if that messed with any of you. Sorry about that. So now I'm going to solve for A. So I divide both sides by M. And I'm left with A equals, whoop, the M's cancel, is U times G. And for this problem, it was big as anything sliding to a stop, that'll be true. So the mu in this problem is 0.2, gravitational acceleration is 10. So that means my acceleration will be two meters per second squared because I'm multiplying them together. Now, that's how to get um, our acceleration, but let's look what the problem is asking us. It's saying, how far? Oh, shoot, right? So now I'm back to this. I gotta say V initial, V final, acceleration, displacement, and time. So my initial velocity is 20. My final velocity is zero. My acceleration, if it's positive 20 velocity, my acceleration has to be negative two meters per second squared, okay? And it says how far? Just like that problem we did earlier, we're gonna use the same setup. So VF squared, equals V initial squared plus two A delta X. Okay, so V final is zero, V initial is 20, two A delta X right in my room. So I got zero equals 400 minus four delta X. So you get negative 400, it goes negative four delta X. And so I get delta X equals 100 meters. That's a football field. No bueno. So you're driving at 40 miles per hour and you go a football field. Ladies and gentlemen, when it snows this next week, please slow down. All right. So um, hopefully, um, yeah, we're going to try to keep doing these. So have a great weekend. 
Um, great working with you guys. Um, let, let's leave it out for this one. Keep it keep it smaller. But um, as more questions come up, we'll we'll keep answering them. So keep it up, guys. I'm proud of you. Keep keep going. All right. Okay. All right. Have great. Have a good one.